is The Chris Abraham Show. Hey there, this is uh, the Chris Abraham Show, season five, episode 10. This one is about UFOs. Seems to be in the news, seems to be on the hill. I'll be honest with you. I have this thing called aphantasia, which means I do not hallucinate, and I do not have a mind's eye, and I do not imagine visually or um, through taste or smell or, or, sense of hearing or any of that kind of stuff i close i'm as closest thing to an animal as you can think of except for my arguably intelligent brain and arguably my beautiful soul but other than that i do not have the ability to uh, hallucinate cool things like i believe people in my world often do because that's the only way I can explain UFOs right like I live on the eighth floor pointing towards the sky never seen anything but just helicopters planets stars and airplanes Um, in my entire life I haven't seen ghosts or UFOs or anything cool like that Uh, the night before my dad died in his condominium uh, that he was renting on the opposite side of the bay across from El Conquistador Resort in uh, Puerto Rico. He and his uh, lover Mary said that they saw a UFO off their porch, but I didn't get much detail on that. Uh, So who knows what happened. I just know that I love the lore, uh, L-O-R-E, and the L-U-R-E, of the entire concept of there being lots and lots of secrets that none of us uh, terrestrians know about, such as uh, ancient aliens or um, alien technology that was backward engineered and turned into a silicon age of innovation and computers and 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 extreme amounts of technological growth right out of nowhere post um uh post uh area 51 since and all of that i love that i love the idea that there are subterranean reptilian aliens that uh are the influence of our are the physical and physiological influences of our concept of devils. I love the fact that we um, have had many civilizations before now and that we've had civilizations for millions of years. I love the fact that we're secretly part of a interstellar civilization and that we have relationships with people known as the avians and the reptilians and the um, mantises and the nordics and the tall whites and the grays and all that other stuff i love that stuff right like there's nothing as cool as a little bit of coast to coast a little bit of art bell a little bit of david ike a little bit of uh of george nori Uh, some crazy, like one of the things that I really love watching these days is a, uh, a channel called the Y files. And there's this, uh, little goldfish called hecklefish and, uh, JC or CJ or JK or whatever the guy who runs it. He's so charming and smart and forgettable that all you, all I do is remember, uh, the conspiracy theorist, 
hecklefish. And I don't mean to disappoint anybody, but Chris Abraham, the conspiracy theorist, is just the um, Chris Abraham, the uh, the fantasy and sci-fi lover guy. Like I love this stuff. Right now, I'm listening to an episode of Darkness Radio, and they're talking about the fact that Buzz Aldrin saw space aliens and the reason why we haven't been back to the moon. And of course, my conspiracy theory hat both likes to feel that the moon landing was faked based on a um, soundstage in, um, in California being uh, directed by uh, Mr. 2001 Space Odyssey. And um, on one hand, and there having been a space race onto the moon that was then rebuffed and rebuked and rejected and warned by um, denizens of the moon. Denizens of the moon saying, get off my moon or else. Denizens of space. And then there's a conspiracy theory that we're in fact not in fact a heliocentric uh, world at all, but a, a, a Judeo-Christian Christian concept of the world with a literal flat earth and a firmament and a, um, invisible wa- uh, an invisible watchmaker who uh, mechanically created a clockwork in the sky that resulted in in the movement of the moon and the sun and the stars and that it's physically impossible for us to go to the moon because the moon is just a mechanical 2D uh, or 3D um, robotic process that was created for us by um, the architect of the universe or by God or by Allah or whomever. I love all that background noise. Like there's a uh, a giant refrigerator truck that's on diesel idle, but I will not. I will not ignore. I will not ignore it. I will not avoid it. I mean, I will ignore it. I will not avoid it. But so the guy on the uh, on the Darkness Radio episode today is the. You can go check it out. On Thursday, the twentieth of uh, of April, it um, it is episode episode season eighteen, episode forty eight, secret space UFOs, Apollo one through eleven with Darcy Weir. So that's the one you can check out, but. The uh, the space landing was supposedly set up by uh, in a Burbank soundstage uh, by by uh, Stanley Kubrick. And so that's supposed to be, that's the reason why uh, there could be a live video stream from the moon. Like when not even ham radio was reliable, how can you get a live stream from the moon? Like it's literally impossible with technology of the day. And that's another thing. Another thing is that there's other people who believe that the ending of the NASA moonshots resulted in, in fact, a relationship with a uh, space federation in that there are thousands of people who are humans, uh, who are homo, uh, homo sapiens sapiens, who are flying throughout space on alien technology and who are uh, zimming and zooming and fighting space wars and being on Mars and being on spacecraft owned and operated by the Nordics or the tall whites or, um, and that were in a constant war 
with the reptilians who are in who are nefariously connected to the greys either the greys are uh, automatrons or androids or um, uh, distance robotics uh, they're uh, they're automatrons that are being used because the they're drones if you will they're they're androidic drones that do the work of drone operators that live back in Beetlejuice or wherever else the space aliens live. And that, according to one story, um, young recruits from the military are recruited, sent out for 20 years to fight the good fight a la the Rebels or a la um, Star Trek or a la um, any of those other space operas. And then after 20 years... There's a technology that can revert them 20 years to 19 years old again, and then they're reintegrated into the world. Or, or they return to the point when they started, and they just it's as if they were only gone for a moment. And then there's other stories that I love of people who teleported to Mars with Barack Barry Hussein Obama and uh, Barry Obama, the former president, was in fact a space traveler and space travelers are recruited um, when they're very young when they're children and when they have those special short buses for all the genius kids the genius kids are taken on all these uh, field trips and while they're at these field trips they are teleported to mars and when they return their memories are erased and they just go back to their parents and so forth. There's so many great stories. Oh, my God. One of them was that, you know, the guy uh, was recruited and then told through an NDA that he was going to go fight a space opera for 20 years and ended up fighting hand-to-hand small unit tactics on uh, a moon of Saturn, a moon of Jupiter. Is it Ios or... I don't know, something like that. It's just incredible. So I don't mean to burst your bubble, but my ethos is that anything anybody really believes in and they tell me believe, they tell me they believe in, I just assume they're telling the truth because I don't have a mind's eye and I don't experience a world where I have a heads up display or I can just pop into the air and see myself from above or... Um, when I meditate, manifest a beautiful, like, I grew up in Hawaii. I dated my sweet girlfriend, Georgina Marr, at Kahala Beach. We would be um, making out in the water and hanging out on the beach, listening to New Order and rubbing each other with tropical oils and making out and rolling around and swimming and frolicking man, if I could just like go back to those memories, I would do that all the time. Like, I just do not have the ability to even bring that up. I don't even remember what she looks like uh, until I look back at prom photos. So really, there's an entire world of mystical. But, and and I, I personally believe in God. Like my vision of God is very much Catholic and smells and bells and and frocks and um, and collars and robes and hats and aspergilliums and uh, and organs, but like if it were a different world, I'm sure that I would cotton to saffron robes or or um, strange, weird, monastic, antisocial brothers or or strange. Uh, Hindu gurus or any of those other kinds of things. But I haven't had any real mystical experience. I remember a Maundy Thursday when I was with this beautiful woman who I didn't know liked me named uh, Elizabeth. And we were um, there doing the sitting up with Jesus, you know, in the pews with the host, uh, sitting up, being awake for him because of all of his apostles falling asleep in the Garden of Gethsemane. And Elizabeth had the most frickin', like she saw 
all kinds of mystical, magical experiences with JC and with spirit and with God and with the Holy Spirit. And I just sat there bleary eyed and looking up, desperately wanting to, but only seeing the host in its fancy little frame. Um, but I believe she did. I don't believe she was, she was uh, tripping balls. I believe she had a mystical experience. I mean, I see God all the time, but it's just through, you know, what I call God winks or what are, you know, conspiracy, uh, uh, coincidence and serendipity. But no, I mean, I don't routinely see, I don't see um, mechanical elves. I don't see little worker gnomes. I don't see, I don't see, uh, I've never seen, I've never seen you, Mary. Um, I'm pretty sure I've seen um, Madame Pele, but that's only because I believe Madame Pele is manifested in every homeless woman or old woman that I see on the streets. So I see Madame Pele all the time. Um, what else? So yeah, I love it. Like if you've had any mystical experience, please tell me. I know that my, my dad said he saw um, a UFO. The um, Puerto Rico is part of the um, the, the triangle, uh, that mystical triangle. What is it called? Um, so it's like um, Caribbean triangle. I, I should know. But it's part of that mystical triangle where all the airplanes disappear. So... Theoretically, if my dad were going to see any UFOs anywhere, we'd be there. But my mom tells me stories of mystical experiences all the time. She said when she was um, swimming in the lake in Lake Mohawk, she almost drowned and heard the harps and beautiful songs from heaven. And she was saved by, by angels. And there were other times when she was alone and scared and abandoned and dis and like something broke down or a car broke down or she got lost or something and a random good doer uh, would show up and lead her to safety and then she'd turn around to thank him and he'd disappear. My mom was um, extremely well. Uh, my only experience with uh, guardian angels is when I was heading back from Renaissance weekend from Charleston, riding my motorcycle while slowly dying, I rode uh, in the freezing weather at night with a uh, rain jacket that wouldn't zipper because I was I was um, blowing up like a tick having heart failure and not one point in that 500 miles did I crash did I die I mean based on um, infinite number of multiverses I definitely died like a hundred times and then luckily have the best choice of always choosing the timeline where I survive, whereas all those other timelines where I got mangled or destroyed or hurt or, or crashed or died or got run over or went into a, into a, off the road into a gully and froze to death, all those are different timelines that I haven't been able to experience, luckily. So, what about you? What is your concept of UFOs? Like, I can currently both believe that um, extreme amounts of futurism exists. We know aliens. Aliens live amongst us. Uh, there are every day. Uh, they look out for us. We have a relationship with them. Uh, our people are in space. NASA is a complete red herring. Um, and that we're part of a larger intergalactic force that probably, re probably has relationships with lots of other homo sapiens sapiens and that we're part of a really incredibly ancient uh, line of people and the uh, history that we have is completely manufactured along with the, um, the narrative that I've been told, which is really we are primitive until, you know, the 30s or 40s. And then spontaneously, we had these mad technologies that result in smartphones and intergalactic potential intergalactic travel and amazing 
medicine that allows me to live. And that, you know, 50 years ago, none of this stuff existed. 100 years ago, we were basically primitive. And 150 years ago was the damn Civil War where we were uh, treating ourselves by bleeding ourselves with freaking leeches and cutting off limbs because of, of, um, of you know, getting shot during the freaking Civil War, right? So, I mean, just think about it. World War I... People were still using um, bolt-action rifles in wartime. Like 1918 is when all those uh, amazing uh, Mosin Nagants and all those amazing Mauser uh, battle rifles were created, right? 1918, people were using... uh, People were using freaking bolt action rifles. And uh, there were 1911s, right? There were 1911 was born in 1911, the 45 caliber gun. And that was the time of Browning. But even then, you know, like, I don't know when the first machine guns were made, but but 1911 was pretty early in the world of, of um, semi automatic. Uh, magazine fed semi-automatic pistols handguns and 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 uh, machine guns and sidearms and rifles so so that's the timeline that i'm most familiar with that's the one i believe in i believe my mom and dad were so excited about the the moon landing Uh, my narrative tells me that uh, people got bored with space they couldn't come up with the money uh, that there were recessions, that there was the war in Vietnam, uh, that the hearts and minds of the country didn't care, that the only reason we cared about the space race was because of competition with the Russians and Soviet Union. So that's my narrative. Then there's a narrative, you know, where Space Force is actually a place where people are on distant um, intergalactic enterprise level um spaceships you know battleships and and cruise ships and all that other kind of stuff and we here on the earth are just uh left to live our pedestrian um terrestrial 20th 21st century lives and that we do not need to know um and that if people knew about our intergalactic reality, uh, it would really mess up the have and have nots concept in, in on the on the earth. So anyway, uh, I really find that hard to believe, and I find that um, those kinds of I guess they can get people into space. All they have to do is say that they're um, that they're launching a, a rocket to, you know, deliver supplies to the uh, intergalactic international space station, or if they need to put up satellites or whatever. I know they put up, you know, DIA, NRO, NSA satellites all the time without us really knowing, but. I assume that they could lift off. I mean, it's really hard to get people not be able to track space launches. There are eyes and ears all around the world. So you would need to be really rural to to do those kinds of shots. Of course, if we live in a future where there's uh, anti-gravity, where um, these you know, triangular, the triangle UFOs. There's the, um, according to Art Bell, he said that when he was in uh, Nevada, he saw UFOs that were completely silent and uh, one, two, three, or four uh, football fields, big and tall and wide and so forth. So you don't even need uh, archaic uh, rocket ships if you have things that can are anti-gravity or can bend time space or have the uh, kind of anti-gravity or 
or the ability to just um, pierce through uh, space-time or get into wormholes or bend space into a folded piece of paper or not even need to go warp but just to uh, teleport or do any of those kind of things and you really do not need uh, launches that are obvious to people. So, But at the end of the day, because I'm just a... A, a, a terrestrian animal without any magical uh, ability to envision anything more. I'm happy with there being a world of just humans and just animals and just plants and just fish and just primates and just uh, different types of Homo sapiens sapiens and um, and uh, and that we flew to the moon that we've sent out probes to the edge of the solar system and that we've sent telescopes into the ether and that we have a space program and that SpaceX is part of that and NASA is part of that and the Russian Soyuz and all these other things. Um, I don't need a narrative besides that. I have a super computer in my pocket I have unlimited, I'm old enough to remember when phone calls were expensive and now I can call anybody in the earth for free. And I'm fine with uh, there not being angels and I'm fine with there not being space aliens and I'm fine with there not being chupacabra or mothmen and I'm fine with people not being shape-changing aliens and I'm fine with the earth not being hollow. And I'm fine with not being, I'm fine with just being, as a Homo sapiens sapiens, I'm fine just being 5,000 years old as a species and being millions of years old as a lineage and being uh, related to uh, monkeys and apes. And that's the reality I'm perfectly happy with. And uh, let me know all your stories and I hope you enjoyed this and I know that this would be better served it's just a zoom call so i can actually have the back and forth question but i thought i would just tell you what i actually believe because i think you guys think that i believe in everything and that i'm a sucker born every day and while i am a sucker born every day i don't believe everything but i believe that you believe everything you tell me i believe everything you tell me to the bottom of my boogity boogity shoes and not just kind of a turnaround and roll my eyes at you kind of way. I believe your reality. I believe your faith. I believe your truth. I believe your fear. I understand your anxiety. And all I can do is tell you that you need to go to a climate 12 step and remember that uh, there are so many things that we're powerless over and we need the wisdom to know the difference. Amen. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.